Hey guys, this is Patrick Hall with fstoppers.com and today we're releasing a small excerpt from Peter Hurley's full-length tutorial, Illuminating the Face. If you don't know who Peter Hurley is, he's one of the top headshot photographers in the industry and in this tutorial he covers everything he knows about lighting from hard and soft light to using different modifiers. And in this small excerpt, he's gonna teach you everything you need to know about the inverse square law. I hope you guys enjoy this and if you want more information on the full tutorial, head over to fstoppers.com slash store. Guys, now we're gonna talk about the inverse square law. So what is it? It's basically light fall off. I love light fall off, I'm crazy about it. I use it every day. I need to know about the inverse square law. But do I need to think about the fractions and the mathematics behind it? No, I need to know the concept. So here it is for you. We got a Profoto D1 right here. It's blasting light at me, no modifier on it. And it's shooting light across this paper. We're gonna put a tape measure up, we're gonna measure one foot increments down this paper, and we're gonna measure the light source as it falls off. All right, you got that under control? Yep. Here we go, we got one foot right here. We got two feet. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, you get the gist of it. Okay guys, so now we're just gonna get a little technical, a little mathematical on you, and we're gonna put it all up here and we're gonna see how it all plays out. All right, guys, so the reason why this is so important, I'm gonna go over the equation here. The inverse square law is essentially the intensity of the light is equal to one over the distance from the light squared. And why this is so huge is because of light fall off. I'm a big shooter in light. I shoot with, I love fall off. I love playing with it. So this, is, this equation is really important to me. Not on a daily basis, but in my head, I'm aware of it. So the reason why, the distance from here to here, there's a huge amount of fall off in the first foot. But when I go eight feet down, the amount of fall off from seven to eight feet is like minimal. All right guys, got my trusty marker, let's get into this. So we're just gonna do, we're gonna mark these up, one foot increments, one each. So this is one, six, seven, and eight, okay? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna square these. So we're gonna square these to get the inverse square law. Put a little two on each one of them, fire it up. There we go, okay. Yes, my handwriting's terrible, just deal with it. So, <laughs> so we're one squared, right? So one over one equals one, right? Two squared is one over four Right, well, we're gonna do 100%. 100% light, right? One over four, 25% light. It's hard to write on this thing with it moving, but that's what we're doing. So, three squared, one over nine, or what, 11% light. Four squared, one over 16. One over 16 or 6% 6 light. Five squared, one over 25 or 4% light. All right? Six squared, one over 36, 3% light. Seven squared, one over 49. 2% light, and eight squared, one over 64, 2% light. Every time you double the distance, you drop the amount of light 75%. It doesn't matter if it's a foot or if it's an inch or it's a yard or whatever. Doubling the distance is gonna drop your light 75%. So watch, from 125 in one foot. Now we're gonna go two to four feet, we're gonna drop it another from 25% to 6%. Then we're gonna go from four feet to eight feet and we're gonna drop it from 6% down to 2%. Every time you double the distance, 75% gonzola. You gotta understand this, this is huge. This is why it's so insane. Look at this, we're at one foot, right? We're at 100%. A foot later, we've dropped a quarter of the, like three quarters of the light. 75% of the light is gone right here and then off on down. So when we get back here, the difference between here and here is essentially the same, both 2% of the light. 
That's crazy. This is photography, guys. This is what it's about. You need to know how important is, do you think it is to have the distance of the light from the subject? Now you know. All right, so guys, now we've learned what the inverse square law means. Now, do we need all the mathematics and the mumbo jumbo to take pictures? No. Do I think about that on a daily basis? No. But what is important is this concept that from here to here is a huge two stop difference. And if I want to cause a shadowing on somebody's face, what's that mean I have to do? I got to put that light source really close to them. If I want to flatten their face out and I want the same intensity on their nose as I want on their cheek or their ear, what am I going to do? I'm going to move the light source further away. Simple as that. Think about the, how far we can get. If we want really flat light, we're going to move our light sources way, way back. Think about how far away the sun is. The whole earth is like lit up. Like there's very little fall off at all anywhere whenever the sun's shining at us. So get your light sources really far away if you want to flatten stuff out. If you want to really have some major fall off, get your light sources as close to what you're shooting as possible. So now you got this. Well, in this next example, I'm going to translate this into how you put this light onto somebody's face and really drive this home. Hey guys, so here we are. I got my buddy Kahari here and we are going to test this inverse square law situation going on. So we're going to, I plastered him with a, with a pro photo head right in his face. So I'm going to let him close his eyes for this one. I'm going to test the light and we're going to look at the fall off. So keep your eyes closed. All right, good. So we're at F22. Let's go to F22 on this. I'm at 200th of a second. And we're going to take a shot. So what you can see is amazing. So you get really nice light on the nose and the cheek. And then as soon as it hits his, hits his cheek, boom, black, falling off. You can barely see. You just see his ear creeping in there. Now watch this. I'm going to move this back a couple feet and we're going to keep going. It doesn't really matter how far we go. I just want to show you the basic gist of this. So we'll go back a couple feet. All right, we're kind of trying to keep everything about the same. And we'll do a test on the light right on his nose. Keep those eyes closed. Okay, we're at five, six, eight. So I'll go to F8, which is basically F8. Okay, we'll go to F8. We're at 200, we're going to F8. Let's see here, F8. Hold on, keep those eyes closed, I'm going for it. There we go. All right, so now you can see his ear and you can see the fall off is a lot. It's starting to get softer. Now the ear is in, in, is in. Let's keep going back and try it again. Let's go back here. Let's try this. Do it again. 2.8. All right, let's try it at 2.8. Going 2.8. There we go. And now you can see even more of the back of his head. All right, now I'm going to put it all the way to the wall. Let's see what this does. All right, we're going to get it back here as far as we can. I might, I, I think I'm going to have to up my ISO a little bit to get this to happen, but let's try it. We've got to point it directly at him. Let's do a meter reading. All right, so guys, we're going to up the ISO on this. I'm going to go to, I'm going to go to 100. And now I'm at F28. Okay, so guys, I'm at 100 ISO now at F28. Let's try it. Good. From that, you can now see that the contrast from the front of his nose to his ear is a lot more even. And now I can see the back of his head. So this is the best thing about it. When you're looking through magazines and you're trying to figure out, dissect images that you've seen taken that you really like, that you want to recreate, you're now going to know exactly how far away that light source is. You can tell that we had that thing right up on his nose for the first shot, which had like ridiculous amounts of fall off, fall off, fell off very, very rapidly. When we move it back, a lot less fall off, a lot more detail. When you look at pictures, I want you to Keep this in your brain and keep, keep thinking about it. So throughout the course of the tutorial, I am going to be shooting them. They're going to be looking directly at me, but I'm going to be varying the distance of the light away from the subject. 
in order to figure out how much fall off I want and how deep I want those shadows to go. If I want to open up those shadows, you now know I'm going to move the light away. If I'm going to close them down, I want that light really, really close. All right, so I have Cersei here and we are going to take some shots. This is really the, one of the major ways I use the inverse square law is I vary the color of the background with it. I like to, to change the color of my backgrounds. I have a white uh, Hurley Pro white matte pro board back there and I really like to make it go a nice gray and I'll go different tones of it, of gray with it. I can make it white, I can make it any tone of gray, I can make it black. So we're just gonna show you by varying the distance of the light from the subject, how the inverse square law changes the color of the background. So let's just do a, a meter reading on her here and let's check this out. Okay, I'm at 2.8. We're at a uh, 100 ISO, we're at 1 60th of a second here at 2.8. Perfect, Cersei, hold that right there, that's great. There we go. Okay, and now I get her exposed and I've got a fairly white background. If I wanted to go all white, I could either strobe it or I can move her right up against it. So it's gonna fall off a little bit to gray. Now I want you to watch. I'm gonna move the light closer and we're gonna stay on the same angle. I might lower it a little bit as we come closer because otherwise it's not gonna hit her properly. So now we're right about here and we're going to do a meter reading and see where we're at and I want you to watch okay that's at five six so we went two stops to five six and we'll take a shot and now I want you to watch the exposure on her remains the same and the background now starts to go a little bit closer to gray Guys, so see the background went a little bit more gray there, but let's really prove our point. Let's get this light right up in there and we're gonna, we're gonna hammer her with light. I'm gonna make sure she's, the light's not in the frame, but I would like it as close as possible. Uh, actually, I like to shoot the light in the frame and then take it out and retouching, but we'll keep it just like this and we'll see what that does. Let's take a meter reading. All right, we're at 11. Let's go F11. And here we go. And we'll look at that. And now we have a nice gray on the background. Now, I like to vary that gray from an 18% gray to even darker all the way to black. In order to do that, with I could either move the light all the way in and have to retouch it off or I just move her away from the background. So Cersei, come take a couple steps forward for me. Keep coming, keep coming, keep coming, stop right there. Hold that and we'll move the light back to approximately where it was. We're going to shoot it at the same exposure because I'm guessing that's where it was. I mean, we could test it again, but I'm pretty sure that it's going to be right about, right about where it was and it is so it was actually a little bit closer maybe and let's just try this hold that it's in the frame slightly and let's just take a shot perfect and now we've got a really deep thunder gray and now let's just go for total blackness come on back more Cersei now it depends yep keep coming keep coming Keep coming. Okay, perfect. All right, so now I pulled her way far away. I'm up against my wall. I've got the light out here. If I, I want to see how black, how dark that background goes. Fantastic. Now we're talking. So I hope you guys enjoyed that short little excerpt. Peter's full link tutorial is over four and a half hours long. And if you want more information on the entire Illuminating the Face series, head over to fstoppers.com store.